Welcome back to the University of Queensland School of Architecture series on Grasshopper and Rhino. Now, as you can see, we started off with a very simple and reasonably elegant solution for the cores, but when we start to get into some of the nuances of the design, particularly with this offset core, that's when we start to get into a great deal of complexity. And it's at that point you can decide whether to do that parametrically or whether that would be modelled in Rhino. Ostensibly it's probably still wise to keep everything integrated together. But you can see as soon as you start to get these these funny little bespoke uh, routines within what is a simple tool, it can start to get a little bit messy and that's what's happening through here. And in some senses I'm, I'm going to perpetuate it just simply in order to finish off the logic of this detached lift core. We've managed to get the flaws to engage with each step value of the the lifts but st people still need to be able to come into the into the lifts at the ground level of these two lift cores through here in order to go up to the floors that are serviced by them so i'm going to set that up as another separate part of the routine and i'm going to do that with a series I'm going to need, so I'll duplicate the geometry through here, but I need to do a count based on the number of cores again. The step value will be uh, basically an addition of the, the width of the core, whoops a daisy, through here. I'll zoom out, put that back in there, so that's one value and the uh, lift lobby width, so we'll zoom that out pop that in through there, so that's the the step value, but if we look through here we've got the zero, so we want to we don't want to duplicate this floor again. What we want to do is just move it once and twice. So we have to get rid of that zero value. And we're going to do a cull index like we've done before. Um, oh, so we'll get rid of the index zero. How to get through there. Shrink that down. That's the list there. And then you can see we're going to get a copy of those two steps instead, which is what we want. Come on through there. Then we've got, uh, so that'll set up our move. So we're going in the uh, x direction, but in a negative again. So we go negative. Uh, we've got an x unit through there. So pop that to there, that to there. Uh, we've got another move through here and what we're trying to do is we'll pick up the boundary rectangle of the floor which is this one here so that pops across there that pops across there and so now we've got two extra floors through there now this is a separate strand of the routine so we can afford to be um, a little bit generous with the lobby in this case, so let's just do a, a multiplication and I'm going to oops, come back here and I'm going to pop that in there, so I'm going to do a double height lift lobby, so I've got to find my floor to floor through here and drag it down there so that's our floor to floor height and I'm going to uh, do a duplication of this as a roof so that'll be a Z unit so that'll pop into there we'll do a move into there and that'll be the geometry we'll duplicate so there's the roof of our lift lobby for the high and medium rise. Okay, to finish this off we're going to put a facade on this and give the floors a bit of thickness. So to do the thickness we'll do an X, uh, actually, no we'll do the facade first because we might get into some 
problems through here. So the loft here will give it the same value as we're doing everywhere else. We'll do a straight loft. I'll copy that because we want to do these separately. So that is then the um, the three facades and that through there. And then we'll do, this is where we're going to probably get into a bit of trouble because if we do, um, so that's the bottom row of curves and if that's the top row of curves, we're going to get this weirdness going where it's sort of lofting in a sequence, which is kind of not what we want. So I'm going to disconnect all of these and I'm going to do a weave so that they they come in in the right sequence and I'm also going to graph these so that the the data will come through a little bit neater not neater but just kind of in the right relationship and we pop that there and voila there we go and then last thing I'm going to do is an extrude and that extrude will be vertically so in the Z direction it will be the slab thickness which is coming up through here there we go and whoops I put that in the wrong place so where's that slab thickness again here it is um, it's going into the Z and we have then the, this is a floor geometry here um, this is a floor geometry there and this is the other floor geometry there so that's them all there so now we have a fully parametric it, it steps up the cores we've got the floors going up in steps and we've got the facades and all of those now for what initially seemed like a sort of simple and innocent part of the initial concept sketch and what seemed to work from the cores turned out to be probably a little bit more complicated because of this additional set of constraints that I've put onto it so I needed to follow through because that's what I started with and that's how that translated so I'm going to leave it there and this is then saved off as stage 4 in the seed files and the final part of this routine we're going to look at so getting some data out of this model so we'll see you for that